Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantelle and today I'm going to start a little new project and you can probably craft along if you would like to. So you all voted for me to use this Stemperia Alchemy scrapbooking paper in this project. Um, I did explain a little bit what it was in my community post, but you all voted for this one, which is gorgeous paper. Uh, this is an eight by eight inch um, paper pack and I also have a 12 by 12 one but for this small project I think this is more than enough for me to cover what I need to cover so my idea was I have these three little boxes and they used to have soap I like to uh, use normal bars of soap and these are from Beach Road Naturals made in Australia and um, I thought they would make cute little books once they're finished obviously to um, make a little slip a slip case go all around and at the back but you can still see the three spines um, I thought that would be a cute little project to make using this pack um, I have selected some embellishments um, that I might use more some wooden elements and um, silver. I think silver would go nicely with this um, teal and black and um, what is it, beige. And um, yeah, I think we're just get going. Um, first of all, I need to prep these boxes. So what I try to do, I was looking if I could, so the inside is shiny, if I could separate that shiny part and I can. So this is just paper that comes off. Um, but yes, I need to take this apart. I can here we go. You can see that this inside is shiny, so I need to I will need to peel that back. Like so. It's quite easy to uh, take that apart. So so I'm just gonna prep these boxes and then I'll be back with you. And then I will cut off the sides. So I'm just left with the spine and the front and the back cover. So what I want to do is these images would fit perfectly on the cover of these ones. So um, I would like to cover the fronts first with gesso and then with um, uh, what do you call them? Tea bags? Um, I think it fits nicely with the grungy look of the papers. Uh, it will give it strength and texture. I think that would be really nice. And also, it would patch up my uh, broken cover because I, I tore it whilst I was um, tearing um, the package, uh, packets open. So, um, yeah, let's cover it with a gesso first, white gesso, and then put a layer of these. Um, tea bags on. I have two layers of gesso on every um, booklet. I had some old gesso and I used it first and it was really really bad. It was all shiny when I, when I was finished with it and then I used this new fresh gesso and it's matte like it's supposed to be. Anyway, two layers on one side and nothing on this side because it's just white um, and now I've separated some tea bags now I'm gonna layer them all over and also on the inside I will overlap them a little bit so I can you know um, flip it over like that so the sides are protected as well um, I will sew around eventually as well just because I like the look of it but um, for now I'm just gonna cover the whole thing on one side and I'm going to do that with a water and PVA glue mixture, about 50-50. So let's do that first. Then I grab a tea bag and lay it over the side and just brush it over on the top as well. And then I'm going to overlap them a little bit. continue this until the entire cover is covered and then I'll blow dry it then I can 
turn it over and flip all the edges around. This is obviously the most work. So um, I've blow dried it, but it's still a little bit wet. Um, they become very sturdy though with this on it. So now I want to cover the inside. So that's the outside, inside. So what I will do, let's trim this evenly. So it's not too much of a mess. This part too. Okay, so we'll grab the ooh, the glue again. We'll do the corners first. Fold it over. Then we can just brush it on that tea paper and then fold it over slightly gently. There we go. I'm gonna do that for all sides and then. Um, with the where's my other tea bags? They all flew away. Um, when this is stuck down as well, I'm going to make sure that I'm on the inside so I don't overlap again, so I don't have to fold it over again. Okay, I have these three all already and covered now. They look great, but they are still a little bit wet, and that is because this these tea bags absorb just so much moisture of that. PVA and water glue mixture that it just takes a little bit of time to dry. So this is still a bit moist. This is mostly dry on the outside. And I suppose it's a bit more orange than I would like it to be. However, you can see there's still that orange coming back or that rusty orange color coming back a little bit in the colors. So I think it will be fine. Yeah, that should be okay. So I want to use the moon, the sun, and the key uh, for the covers. So um, I suppose in the meantime, I can cut those out and uh, yeah, go from there. It's always the thing with double, uh, double, double-sided pages that there's a gorgeous backside as well. But you know, I suppose a pop of orange is really not a bad thing. Kind of goes with this teal. And I do want to grunge this journal or these journals because there's three up a little bit, uh, probably with some black. So to me, this looks pretty good. Um, I might actually get rid of that outer edge because of the size of it. So if you're wondering how to get these sizes, like you can also use packets of copper soup or also packets of soap. Um, Oh yeah, you can't, can't really tell that it's, it was a packet of soap, right? It does smell nice though. This silver corner is really pretty there, especially if I grunge it up a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit more and then I'll be back with you. They are dry. Now, um, I think I'm going to paint them black because I want this to have this dark alchemy kind of look, you know? So I'm going to paint them black. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to use plain old acrylic paint. There we go. Apple barrel paint, nothing special. And then of course we need a paintbrush. So let's just paint these black. Front and back, by the way. And then if I itch them up or if they get used over time, you can still see this through because um, obviously with use, paint will come off or not, I don't know. But the paint should stick nicely because um, this is a very nice layer to paint on. Okay, the covers are black. Yeah, we have them. <laughs> you can hardly see them, but they are black. 
Um, and now I want to decorate them with these. Look how much better that looks. I should really change my background. This is really dark. Um, I might do that in a minute. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. And uh, I, I really do like that effect. So I'm, I think I want to grunge it up a little bit. Mm. Scissors. Tim Holtz also has a special tool for um, grunging it up on the sides, but a ranger, I don't know, one of the two. But um, I sometimes just use scissors because, you know, that's the same thing really. There's that. I'm going to do a similar thing with the other two. And then I want to grab my ink and ink it up before I glue it down. Although I can probably also, because this is the acrylic paint that I was using. Yeah, that goes a bit much, I think. Although, not too bad, but I want that grungy look of the, of the ink, so. I'm gonna go with ink. So I thought it would be fun to have behind these little indents that I made to have something sticking out. Oh, there's some nice images here. Could probably do the little bee and the eye thing. I think I'm gonna go with a bee for one of them. So we have one bee, and I think I'm gonna go for this number two because it's nice and contrasting. I think the B with the key and then this one sticking out there. So I'm going to fussy cut this so it's just a little key popping out and fussy cut the B as well. I have decided that from that sheet of um, six from the covers, there are three more. So I decided to put them on the back of the booklets and um, make grungy as well. And uh, I have these sequins that my friend Jen sent me and I want to put them on the cover and I want to sew them on. And then eventually I want to go over with this, it's vintage patina rust, but it's basically just a brown acrylic paint. It's not even a shimmer in it, so I don't know why it's so special and more expensive, but it's basically a light brown. And uh, turquoise, because there's turquoise in the um, papers as well. Now, I did go, I did decide to go with silver embellishments, but, I think I'm gonna have to go with gold. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna change this into gold because I don't wanna paint them, but I think I want to go with gold um, or bronze. So I need to change my embellishments that I have here, but I will do that eventually um, just because of the color choices. And then I found these and I think these are perfect for the spines. So I'm got them, gonna cut them out now grunge them up and then I'm going to sew around everything I want to sew around and then stick everything down. Here is one of the books and I've sewn around all three parts and around the booklet itself as well. And I just want to glue it on now um, for all three of them. So yes, um, I think that's a good way to go. Um, you see the sequence. I really love that effect with the sewing over them. I don't know why, I just do. And they're on all on the on the right hand side of all the booklets. Um, so yes, I'm going to use my uh, Fabri-Tec glue. And for the inside of the booklets, I have prepared. There is a sheet with squares in the pack. And what I want to do when it's all sewed on or glued on, these will become pockets inside of the booklets like so. So all the booklets will have two of those pockets inside. So let's um, let's start gluing and I'll be back when everything is glued on. We have three covers. Um, I'm really happy with these. Um, I still need to glue in the, the pockets but I just wanted to show you these because I am really 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 happy with them. They look so good. Um, yeah. So if they would sit next to each other in a slipcase, that is what it would look like. 
And I think I want each of them to have a dangly there at the top. So I'm going to find some uh, danglies and I think I'm going to go with like old bronze for the for the metal um, embellishments. So yes, I, I, I really do love these though. They will just be tiny notebooks. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself now, but uh, obviously I will make ephemera with all these, well, with some of these sheets. I'm probably not even gonna use all of them because there's, there's so many, but look at these gorgeous pieces of ephemera. And um, these will be the pages that will be going inside. So I have some of these things. Um, I have some smaller ones. Uh, let me see. I have some envelopes that I kind of want to sew around and um, probably open on the side. So uh, there would be a pocket. So they are tea stain stained, coffee stained. Then some of these text invoice papers. Brown paper, blue paper. Normal writing paper. Now there is some teal in this um, journal pack. Teal and blues. You can especially see that in here. Um, so there's some blues there and teals. And I thought this is like a very slight blue tone. And then obviously line papers. And this is some of that old printed paper. And I like the top of that. And... Um, baking paper that I have used to dye papers on in the oven so that gives that nice texture um, so yes uh, we'll be doing that a little bit later first let me glue in these pockets so they are stuck down and then move on to uh, making the signatures all right, I have all the, um, eh, what do you call them, pockets inside. And now I'm gonna have some fun with the crocodile because I want to make some danglies at the spine. So I'm going to put some eyelets in and I'm going to use my crocodile for that. And also I want to make some closures. So I need some more eyelets for that. I chose a, like a metal gray for that one. Um, so yeah, let, let's do that. Um, I think I need the biggest setting and then it's gonna chomp chomp somewhere there. So I can put a dangly on and I'm gonna crimp that. Uh, like so. Don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's crimped. There it is. So that's the spine ones in. I really like that look of it. And now I wanted to grab a ring. Put the ring through. Yes. And then see if I can just oh, I can just put the charm on there like that. I thought I needed a, <coughs> excuse me, I thought I needed a ball pin for that, but I don't. I can just put it on like this and we have a, a dangly on the spine. I really do like that. And I chose to go with three keys, so every, um, every spine dangle will be a key, a different one. So, um, here's the other one. Just need a small jump ring through here and close that one there we go there's number two it is 11 centimeters so that's 5.5 so let's put a dot there not looking too much on where it is going to be on the outside because I just want it to be in the middle Yes, that's a little bit tricky because it might go through some sequins and whatnot, but you know, you know, you know. You 
finish measuring them all out. There we go. Now I'm just going to punch a hole again. Okay, so that went just underneath my two, which is cool. I have to say, I do like the look of eyelets. See there? I love that look. It just gives that industrial look that I really like. So let's do that another five times. And then uh, we have some danglies and some closures. So we're getting somewhere. So for the closure, I found this sari silk that ties in perfectly with that color here on the front. Um, it's like a teal kind of color. Um, but yeah, it's sari silk and um, I just tied one knot here and in a way that, so this hangs down. And then I can tie a bow on the side here. It's just long enough to do that. And it's just, short enough so it stays within oops so it stays within the height of the journal when i put it in the slipcase so that is good so i will now put that on the other two as well and uh i think they look rather good so far i just need to fill them up and then make that box that goes around it i have the booklets and the signatures so here are three signatures one two three the only thing that i have sewn is this envelope that i cut to size then put the thumb holes there and then sewn top and bottom now we have two pockets in the journal and i made a little signature sewing thing that i will then glue in here and um I just need to sew the signatures in now. So, um, I'm going to get a needle and thread for my signatures. I need one, two, three lengths in order to sew it. Nine times, because I've got three journals, times three um, signatures each. It's nine. And I happen to have this teal thread and I got that at the thrift store, which is great. So this is the stuff I use and you know, why not pick it up? And now I want to coat my thread with beeswax by running it over it a couple of times. And like I've said before, this makes the knots stronger and the thread stronger as well. Makes it less fluffy too. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but. So this one is coated and this one is not. I'll just do that for all the threads and before I do before I continue that, I will show you how I bind these journals, which is basically the same thing that I always do. So I want the threads to be on the outside. So I start by going through this one and then through, if I can find it, through here. Sure that this lines up properly. Then go through the top. I made three holes in this one. You can also do a five or seven or nine template stitch. But three is fine in this case. You can go all the way to the end. there's no thread but I do and then you go back through the middle again and you try to end up on the other side of this thread 
You can mix it if you want. You take the needle out, then you tighten it a little bit, and then you make a knot. If you are interested in different kinds of bindings, I might have to start a journal binding 101 kind of series on different binding techniques. Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. So there's one signature. I'm going to do the other ones just the same until I have the other two sewn in. Then I will glue that just by gluing here. And then gluing that into the book like that um, and by binding it and binding it here it means that in the middle you only see the threads and not the yeah the binding or not binding. so yeah and i picked the teal because it goes nicely with some of the colors in here so i'll be back when that is done okay so the books are complete. All the signatures are sewn in. I added an, an extra little charm here. This one says magic. This one says inspire. And this one says imagine. I thought they looked cute in the black uh, with the key. So they are on there too. And they make a nice sound. Um, come here. So these are the books all filled up. I love how they turned out. Absolutely love them. That's it. And um, now I want to make that slip case. So obviously these books would be closed. I can imagine that these books would just mainly be used for writing and not anything else per se. Um, they do not have a lot of room to expand and uh, when they're in the slipcase, not at all. So yeah, so this is what it looks like closed. Gorgeous. And obviously I need to oops, fill the pockets here with ephemera and I have for every journal these things that I want to put at the top here. So I want to do three. One, two, three. One for every signature. Um, it's like a little tab. I thought it was cute. So I'm going to do that first, fill up the pockets, and then I'm going to move on to making the slipcase. So I'll see you very soon. Let's make a box. So I measured these little books booklets and I got to nine centimeters wide 11.5 centimeters tall and eight centimeters deep so I have some cardboard here actual cardboard and also some um, what do you call this it's not what is it cardstock I don't suppose it's cardstock um, but just um, uh, packaging from ELO, Hue markers, and packaging from Cereal Biscuits. So the reason I have both of them is that this is shiny and this is not, but it has some imaging on, on it. I'll open this pack up. This is matte as well, so I kind of want to um, cut out both of these pieces uh, with the dimensions that I've got and then stick these sides together so I have cards, cardstock and you know grey card, cardboard um, showing and I can decorate that or paint that um, as in a glossy surface is harder to paint. I suppose I could gesso it but that means more drying time etc etc anyway 
I'm going to cut some pieces and then I'll be back and I'll show you what pieces I've got and then you can replicate it if you want to. Side, back, base, side and the top so they will go together like that. And now I want to glue these onto this um, cereal box or whatever it is on the other side obviously and then cut around it and then I have my box pieces so if you want to make this this is this back is 11.5 by 9 centimeter the sides are 11.5 by 8 and the top is 9 by 8 centimeters and the top the base and top so those five pieces you will need if you are going to make the exact measurements of these boxes anyway I am going to glue this on and I'm going to do this with good old hot glue put my one two three blocks on here if you don't know what these are I will leave them in the description box below where you can get them on Amazon and um, yeah I use them for miniatures and also for journal making to keep things flat. I have a box here and I have not tried the journals yet but let's, let's see if they fits inside. They should. And they do. It's perfect. Look at them. Beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted, and now I just need to decorate the decorate. I need to decorate the outside of the box. It's pretty sturdy because it's two pieces of cardboard um, glued on top of each other, or yeah, on top of each other and then glued together. The corrugated stuff is on the inside. The smooth stuff is on the outside to make it easier to decorate on the outside. Now, the first thing I need to do is do something about these edges. It's not the prettiest, so I have some painter's tape. And you will see that eventually this does not matter at all what you decorate or, or not decorate, but cover this with. Because what it just needs to do is uh, take care of those edges. Or, uh, yeah, the, those edges and also the holes that are inside, so the corrugation that you can see which is great to just do it this way. And I'm going to cover this with paper anyway, so this is not gonna come loose if you're worried about that. So I'm just gonna go around and do that all around the box. And I will also do that on all the edges here to reinforce it and to cover all those edges. And then um, we can move on to the decorating. Okay, I have completed the inside. Um, covering. I went with music paper because the main color is similar. Now for the outside I have many pages to choose from but I'm going to go with these two. So this one is too dark. This one is too pretty to, to cut up. This one is a little bit too blue. So I'm actually looking at these three and I'm deciding on the papers. This one has too much blue. This one has too many pretty elements to uh, cut up in a complete pages. Maybe I will use elements of this on the outside of the box. This one, again, too many small elements that I can cut up in ephemera. And this one was too plain. And we have this one, which is again, ephemera. And well, I'd rather use this side than this side. And then I'm left with these two. Now these pages are quite plain, however these ones are mainly to do with the solar system, which is these two. Um, and the key doesn't really come back, but the swirls that are in here are in here as well and in here. So I'm gonna go with these two. Now what I'm also going to do once I've decorated the main parts here is make the edges black with acrylic paint basically uh coming back to these ones and also on the inside all the corners and where the cardboard meets is going to be black 
so that will all join in together nicely. This is a very sturdy box and um, with that paper inside, yes they still do fit, I'll do it sideways because then everything gets stuck. And because that paper is now in there it's nice and snug. And there we go. I do love this and uh, yeah it turned out the way I wanted it to so let's continue with this box I'm going to cut these papers about half a centimeter smaller on all sides well on one side and the other side so it fits on here quite nicely and then I'm going to glue them on here is the decorated box now before I continue with the decorations I am going to apply some black paint to all the edges to let it tie in with the books so um, let's do that and I'm just touching the sides of that of those papers so they go black as well because normally sides of papers are white and when I'm done with the paint, I'm gonna go over with the ink like I did around these edges for it to all blend in very nicely. So, um, I will see you back when I'm done with this because this is uh, gonna take me a little bit, I think. So this really transformed the box in its entirety. So let's add those faded edges you can see what I mean faded not faded and when I um, am finished I am going to put a protective layer over this entire box at least the exterior so basically it is an acrylic varnish uh, matte varnish spray so it protects everything that I've just done there we go that looks good compared to that what a difference doesn't that so I'm just gonna continue this until I'm done with the box and then I will move on to some more embellishments on the outside of the box Okay, I think I, um, I'm i done with this project. I did not film me fussing cutting and decorating the box because it's just fussy cutting and decorating. It's not, it's really not rocket science. And the thing is, I can't talk and keep talking nonstop about the weather and what I've done last weekend because it is kind of a tutorial kind, kind of thing, right? I had to stop the video for a moment because there was a neighborhood dog barking. Um, anyway, let me show you what I did. I glued on all the background pages, also on the bottom. There's also one there. Then I fussy cut some images and I did some stickles, um, like the glitter stuff as well. So here we've got an, uh, two owl, owls, the number four, number one, a this is a chipboard piece that I colored and a, uh, a, a circle that says alchemy and up here we have a sun and an owl and down here we have number five eight seven a sun a moth or a butterfly and a cat and then i poked two holes with the uh, big bite big shot no big bite not big shot and put two rivets through that was tricky but i managed it I uh, put a little sorry, piece of sari silk and my signature bell that I put on all my journal pieces and a tag saying altered. And then of course we have the journals which you can kind of pull out with these um, keys and the little tag and then take your journals out like that. That's the inside. And then here are the journals. I even did some stickles on the back now because that just makes it all complete and uh, finished. And on the inside, 
we have some things in the pocket there some things in the pocket there and then every journal has a, a larger card there uh, three of these tabs and a square card and some journaling cards there so let me just pop these little journals back into this little slipcase and I wanted to let you know that this set is now available in my store if you are interested in buying it and um, yeah all my shipping comes with uh, track and trace so I ship around the world so wherever you are I will most likely ship there and um, I think this is it for this video I hope you enjoyed watching it and um, perhaps make your own thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye bye Thank you.